Today, we're going to be painting 3D printed fantasy ruins. I've got these awesome Stormguard ruin sets from RM Studios. In this video, we're going to talk about the differences between painting resins and 3D printed kits. We're going to see what we can do to make our 3D printed sets look more like those resin kits. Alright, so our first set was getting all these base coated. Now, I'd use a double thickness grey primer. The ideal tool for this is a filler primer. Now, I found out after the fact that you won't be able to find these at a hardware store, but you will be able to find these at an auto store. So that's the best place to look, and that's the best tool. However, standard spray paint's a lot easier to find, so that's what I went with. Now, after all the pieces were dry, I did my first run of addressing some of the artifacts. The first artifact was these hanging down strings. This happens when the filament is extruded and doesn't fully cool, so it sags until it becomes solid. These are really easy to deal with, I just got my clippers and clipped them off. Now, the next artifact, and the most obvious one, is the printing lines. Now these are the bane of all 3D printers, and there's a few things that we can do to mitigate them. Starting out, I was just sanding the open areas that I could. Now, this wasn't all of it because there was a lot of detailed areas where I simply couldn't sand, but sanding all of it that I could was a good place to start. And the last artifact was these drip looking things on top of the flat areas. Again, I sanded these and then I went in with the razor and I cut off the rest of them. So a great way to make our 3D printed stuff look non-3D printed is to include some elements that aren't 3D printed. Now, for this, I had a tower here that you can see that had a big rock scree section. Leaving this as is would look alright, but I figured why not add actual rubble? That's going to trick the person looking at it into thinking that this is an actual kit because they're first going to see stuff that has real texture without those print lines. So this was really easy to do. I started out with some XPS foam or just the standard craft foam that you see in every terrain making video. Then I cut that into a few rough brick shapes. And next up, I used one of my favorite resources, and that's cork. Cork is great at making rubble or large gravel. I just crushed some up, and it was looking great. I put the tower down, and I just sprinkled these on in places that I thought would look natural, and then I went back and I glued them all down. The next step was just pouring sand over the top and letting the sand accumulate where it naturally would. Next, to fix the sand down, I watered down PVA and I dripped it on top. This is a great technique at making sand look natural. Instead of just doing an even coat over this whole section, it actually let the sand accumulate and form pockets and things like that that look a lot more realistic and a lot better. Now, our next step coming up was painting. Now, Ideally, I'd just go in and I'd dry brush all these bricks and it'd take about five minutes and it would look pretty good. But dry brushing often accentuates the faults of 3D printing. So I decided that I would just paint each brick individually. I used just cheap, thick acrylic house paints for this and the thickness of them actually also helps obscure that. By going through to each brick individually, it really breaks it up. It really makes the brick stand out a lot more and it makes it so that you can't tell that they've been printed at all. Now, this was relatively time consuming, but I stuck to it and I got the whole entire set done in just a few hours. Alright, at this stage we're going to talk about where I got this terrain from. I got this from a company called Whitefoot 3D. Whitefoot 3D sent these over to me as a sponsorship for a tournament that I was running. The tournament was Battle Hard in 2019. It's a Middle Earth strategy battle game tournament. With the support from Whitefoot, we were able to get one extra table out there that looked perfect for Lord of the Rings. So, big thank you to Whitefoot3D for supporting the Australian community. I definitely recommend checking him out. I have a link to his page in the description of this video. Alright, now once all those bricks were finished I moved on to the roofs and the tiles. These I started out in this nice electric saturated blue. 
After finishing off the base coats, mixed a little bit of white in and did some highlights. I thought it looked really, really good and it popped out a lot, but I went back to my source material. I was trying to make Osgiliath from the Lord of the Rings, and you don't see these high saturated blue colors in that. Instead, you see these really desaturated gray blues. So even though I liked what it looked like, I decided I wanted to fit my source material, so I went back over it with a gray blue color. Now, after that was dry, I simply added a bit more white to this gray blue and did some highlights. I thought it matched the setting a lot better. All right, after all this was done, I decided I wasn't happy with how smooth the large open pieces were, so I decided to go back to them. Now, for this, I got out a modeling paste. It is the Liquitex Flexible Modeling Paste. I haven't ever really seen this used before online, and it's a really, really good material. So, all I did was I slapped some on and I around using a, um, a spreading tool, as well as my fingers. Now, you'll see later on that this doesn't really go as well as I thought, but I tried something new. Didn't work this time, but I found heaps of other uses for the modeling paste and we're never going to develop if we don't try anything new. So, while I was letting that dry, I decided that these stones looked a bit flat and plain. Oskilith is a war-torn city, so I thought it would make sense that it was muddy. Did some weathering on it. I got out a bit of foam, I tore it up so it had a ragged end, and I stippled on brown. I stuck to mainly where I thought that the most soldiers would be walking, and I also did the, the bottom walls of the city. Now, after that was all dry, I took a drop of black and mixed it in with my brown, and I went back over it. This time I was a bit more selective. I focused just on the middle of the walkways and just on the very bottom of all the walls. I used this same dark brown to paint, to base coat all of my um, large open flat areas. I wasn't really sure how to interpret these spaces. I kind of thought that they could be stone, but they also could be land, and I wanted to differentiate the stone from the bricks. So I went with brown, and as you'll see here, I just went over that again with a dry brush of grey. Now you can see here the dry brush didn't work particularly well because it did actually accentuate some of the print lines. But in the process, I decided that I needed to get these done as quickly as I could, so I left it as is, and ultimately thought it looked pretty good anyway. Okay. Now, all of the painting at this stage was done. It was looking really, really good, but I wanted to add a few more things. I got some tufts, and I put those in the crags of the stones where shrubs might be growing through. I added a few dead bodies that I got from Lord of the Rings kits. And finally, I was done. This ball was ready to be played on at the tournament. As you can see here, just doing a pan over, I put some of my Minas Tirith models out there because they'd be the defenders of this city. I learned a lot about 3D printed pieces while doing this. Now, mainly, if you paint with the right techniques, you can really, really hide those print lines. I'm planning on getting my own printer, the Ender 5, and in future videos you'll see me printing off my own pieces and doing them from that, but if you don't have a printer, I'd really recommend going to Whitefoot 3D, because it has heaps of good sets. Alright, that is all for this video. Do all the typical things like subscribe and all that good stuff, and until next time, have a good one. This has been Conquest Creation. Thank you for watching. If you want to support the channel, please like, comment, and subscribe. I also have other socials, an Instagram, a Facebook, as well as a website. Feel free to check them out if you want a sneak peek of some upcoming content. Once again, thank you for watching, and hopefully I'll see you at my next video.